Hello, hello, and welcome back to the next round of the Animal Artist Collective. Now, some of you might be a little confused as to what our theme was this round, and that is totally our fault. We ended up having a 50-50 vote over on our Facebook page where we typically have our polls for voting for the next themes, and we just had a 50-50 split decided among the group which of the two themes, which were carnivores and ungulates, and never actually told anyone what our decision was. That means that this round, we are going to have unofficial participants participating in either theme. And that also means that next round, we are definitely doing carnivores and Either theme is up for grabs for unofficial participants as well. If you are just confused about what this whole thing is in general, this is the Animal Artist Collective. It's a collective of artists who love to feature animal artwork and also make YouTube videos. So make sure to check out down below. We will have links to everyone who is officially participating this round. And we actually have a couple returning guests, which I'm really excited to be featuring. Each of the artists creates a traditional piece for the animal that they have chosen within the theme. And these originals go on sale, and so make sure to check if any of these pieces are still available in everyone's stores. And at least 50% of that sale goes to a particular conservation group. Now that we have all of that out of the way, let's discuss this round's theme. So like I mentioned, this round's theme is the ungulate. And to be completely honest, this is the first time I had ever even heard this term. <laughs> Thankfully, Denise over at In Liquid Color has a plethora of education in everything animal, and so she was able to educate many, if not the rest of the group, about what ungulates are, and it's a really interesting group of animals. They are a very diverse group of primarily large mammals, and they include anything from a donkey, deer, horse, rhinoceros, pigs, giraffes, camels, and even whales, which is really interesting. As you might have guessed, another ungulate that falls into this category is the hippopotamus. I was actually just recently at the San Francisco Zoo and happened to see the hippopotamus while it was being fed and it kept getting out of the water, getting food, jumping back in the water and kind of walking around and I got some really great angles and some photos that I used in part for some of my thumbnail sketching that you might have seen at the very beginning of the video. I did have a few different directions I wanted to go with this piece and I ended up wanting to go with a sort of mother and baby figure which has been a little bit of a theme. If any of you have been watching any of my other videos, you may know that I have announced that I am pregnant and we are expecting in September and so so that is coming up pretty quickly. It's definitely on my mind and I mean, why not have another excuse to draw some baby animals, especially with their parents? So that has been something that I have been wanting to do more recently and that is no different with this piece. I really wanted a cute couple of hippos that seem to be sort of coming out of the water, so to speak, that in this picture are represented more by plants, which big surprise, that is definitely something I love adding to my pieces. And so I wanted this to look a little bit like they're coming out of water splashes, kind of plants, something to that effect. I also really wanted the mother hippo to really look very smiley while the baby is sort of relaxed and calm around its mother. There wasn't a really big rhyme or reason to how I decided to make the background. As you might have seen in the beginning, I ended up sketching from thumbnails. Uh, I sketched digitally from thumbnails that I had used in my sketchbook 
and then sketched it again onto the watercolor paper of just the hippos. Then I basically freehanded all of the plants that surrounded them. That was actually pretty relaxing for me. Uh, I have been really tired and slightly stressed recently and so having something where I can just repetitively draw something that I really like to draw and in a sort of pattern was definitely calming for my anxiety. So now that I've talked a little bit about my process and what I'm doing on screen, let's talk a little bit about the hippopotamus. I have some fun facts and just kind of general knowledge as well as what I love to look at which is more of the symbology of the animal. So let's start with some fun facts. The hippopotamus is originally from Africa and it is either the second or third largest land mammal. I saw some differing information there but it is either right behind the elephant or right behind the rhinoceros. I guess it sort of depends on which you consider larger. The hippopotamus actually loves to hang out in the water most of the time. They tend to come out of the water and graze on grass and things like that at nighttime, but they can hold their breath for about five to seven minutes. Because they are so used to the water, calves can actually nurse underwater and they have the ability of actually closing their nostrils to be able to hold their breath and drink at the same time. They tend to live up to 40 years old and in captivity that can actually be increased another 10 years to about 50 years old. The closest living relatives to the hippopotamus are actually whales and porpoises, and they actually secrete a special lotion or sort of sunblock to help protect their skin so that they can be out in the African sun in or out of the water and be protected. Another really cool thing is that they can open their jaws 180 degrees and they have one of the most forceful bites at around 2,000 pounds per square inch. So don't mess with a hippopotamus. <laughs> Actually, the hippopotamus is known to be pretty territorial and protective of its family, which makes it a common symbol for motherhood and strength. Many Native American peoples see the hippo as a symbol of being in touch with one's feelings and searching through one's own subjectivity to find stability and to be able to withstand adversity. It is said that if you are finding the hippo in your dreams, that that could mean that it is time for an emotional detox and any sort of burdening negative emotions or baggage should be worked on and to nurture your hopes and happiness and look for clarity. I'm curious how many of you out there have the hippopotamus as your favorite animal or maybe feel like you have some sort of connection to the hippo in your life in some way. Make sure you comment down below, I would love to hear about it. I had a lot of fun finding these facts and information about the hippopotamus and I hope you enjoyed me sharing those with you. If you have a big heart for the hippopotamus or animals in general, you might be pained to hear that the common hippo is in a vulnerable state and the pygmy hippo is actually endangered. That is a big reason why half the sales of this piece are going directly to the World Wildlife Fund. Make sure to check out the link down below to be able to purchase this piece and even check out the World Wildlife Fund or other charities that can help these vulnerable and endangered animals. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the hippo and seeing and hearing about my process for this particular piece. Again, check out everyone's videos and channels down below. And I wanna give one last shout out to my amazing patrons over on Patreon whose support helps me to be able to create these videos. As always, I hope you have a creatively fulfilled day and I'll see you next time.